Hey, welcome again to our Bible reading videos as we're traveling through the year together. Today is Friday, May the 20th, and we have four passages today. 2 Samuel 11 through 12, 1 Chronicles 20, Psalm 51 and 32, and Acts 27. Four places in the Bible to read today. Uh, we're in 2 Samuel together as we keep talking through the life of David currently, and we get to 2 Samuel 11 and 12, and this is the moment that maybe you've been waiting for. Uh, when you think of King David, certain things come to mind. David killed Goliath and David and Bathsheba. This is David and Bathsheba in 2 Samuel 11 and 12. And it begins by saying in the spring, at the time when kings go off to war, at the, at the spring, at the time that kings go off to war, David had a job to do. He had a responsibility to lead his people into battle. He had a responsibility to point the way as a leader, leading from the front, instead of leading as a lazy leader from the back, saying, go, go, go. And David chose this particular year to stay at the back. And he sent everybody off to war, and he stayed home. Well, because he stayed home, he had a lot of free time on his hands. His soldiers, his, his generals, they're all off to war. The, the, the palace is empty. He's at home by himself. He's walking around on the roof. He's kind of looking around. He's got a bored mind. He's got idle hands. And he looks around. He happens to notice on a rooftop over there a beautiful woman named Bathsheba. She's taking a bath on the top of her house on the roof. This is, this is common uh, at that time. And he sees her, and he's attracted to her. And he tells someone to go and get her and bring her to me. So they go and get Bathsheba, who happens to be married to a man, by the way, named Uriah. Brings Bathsheba back to David, and David and Bathsheba have sex. They sleep together. Well, David gets really nervous because Bathsheba ends up getting pregnant. And he gets nervous and he has to do something to correct the situation. So he begins to plot. He has husband Uriah come home thinking maybe they'll think it's Uriah's baby and but Uriah refuses to go home to his wife because his fellow soldiers are sleeping in uncomfortable situations, so he sleeps outside. Doesn't work. He tries again, doesn't work again. So then he sends Uriah back to the battle with a note for the general saying, put Uriah on the front line, and when the fighting is the worst, pull the army back, leave Uriah. They do, Uriah dies in battle. So David takes Bathsheba to be his wife and thinks, I, I fixed my own problem. I solved my own sin. Now, you and I have lived long enough to know this never works. We can't fix our own problems and we can't solve our own sin. This never works. But David tries it just like you and I have tried it so many times along the way. He tries to fix his own problems, solve his own sin. Well, a prophet named Nathan comes to David and tells him a story about two men. One, one poor man that has one little lamb that he loves like a family member. One rich man that has countless lambs. A visitor comes to the rich man's house and instead of taking one of his own lambs, slaughtering it and serving it as, as a meal, he goes and takes the one lamb from the poor man, takes it, slaughters it, serves it, leaving this man with nothing and himself with everything still. And David hears the story. He burns with anger and says, that cannot happen. This man that did that thing must be put to death and everything paid back four times over to the poor man. And Nathan looks him dead square in the eye and he says, David, you are the man. And in that moment, David realizes what Nathan is talking about. It's not, uh, it's not two men with some lambs. It's David stealing the wife of this man and committing this sin. And David is broken. Again, he's not a perfect man, not a perfect king, but he's broken with the reality and the truth of what he has done. And he repents of it. There's a consequence the baby doesn't survive. But David returns through the grace of God to lead Israel as God's servant even longer. How many times have you found yourself in an idle moment when you know you should be being productive, you should be doing something, but instead you are being idle on your own. And in that moment, when you have a bored mind and idle hands, you find yourself falling into sin. But when you fall into that sin, instead of dealing with it, confessing it, repenting of it, instead of doing all that, you try to fix your own problem and solve your own sin, and you actually complicate it and make it way worse. Have you ever done that? I have. Have you ever done that? If you have, then today is a day 
that you need to embrace confession and repentance. You need to pay, pay back what you've done. You need to let God restore you through his grace. And you need to accept the consequences of your sin, be restored through a process so that you can be the man and be the woman that God intended for you to be. You can't be that person while you're harboring sin, trying to fix things on your own. You must, you must cleanse your heart of the sin, the darkness inside, to lay it out before God. And then you can lead and you can serve and you can live like God intended for you to live. Today, follow David's example, not in the sin, but in the repentance. So that you can follow David's example in the serving also. I hope you were restored to the Lord through whatever is in your past. And I hope you experience days, weeks, months, and years of serving God's kingdom as we go forward. Until I see you again, you are sent.